start by singing, singing out this song, You Are the Most High God.
I pray tonight for a special anointing, O oh God, for only the anointing can break the yoke. Father, tonight I pray that you cover us with your blood, O oh God. Cover us tonight. I pray, God, for those that are coming, that you hasten their footsteps. I pray for those that are on this side, the Lord, that you will give them their portion. I pray for the song leader, the backup, the musician. Your man serve and God for special anointing. As your word go forth, it may go forth with power, it may go forth with conviction. In the name of Jesus, tonight I cancel every plot and every plan of the enemy. I come against the forces of darkness. I come against principalities and powers. Tonight, God, I bring up a country before you. I pray, O oh God, that you take charge and take control for the leaders, Lord. Give them wisdom and understanding. We bind the forces of darkness, Lord. Every spirit of murder, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is not like you, we come against it. I pray for those that are coming and that have a need, Lord, that you would meet them at a point of need. And those that need a healing touch, God, that you would touch them. Father, we thank you, God, that you are a mighty miracle working God. You take charge and take control. Have thy own way tonight in Jesus' name.
John then through Jesus Christ. Jesus himself says in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We need to understand that he is the only way. And as in the one and the only way. He said his words are life in John 6, 63. He promised that those who believe in him will have eternal life. We all know John 2, 16. And he is the gate of the sheep in John 10, 7, the bread of life in John 6, 35, and the resurrection, John 11, 25. No one else can truly claim all those titles and bonds to those who teach false gospel out of their faith. Matthew 7, 21-23. Jesus is the only way to heaven for several reasons. Jesus was chosen by God to be our Savior. First Peter 2, 4. Jesus is the only one to have come down from heaven and return there. John 3 and verse 13. He is the only person to have lived a perfect, sinless human life. Hebrews 4, 15. He is the perfect for our sins, first John 2 and verses 2. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets, Matthew 5 and verses 17. He is the only man to have conquered death forever, in Revelation 1 verses 18. He is the only man whom God had exalted to the highest place that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 9 to verses 11. So there is only one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. In fact, it is, it is the unified testimony of the New Testament that no one can know the Father except through whom? The person of Jesus Christ. I encourage all of you here this evening, make sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. He is the only way to heaven. There are only two ways that you go. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. The gate, the door to heaven is Jesus Christ. So I trust the night. Take an inventory of yourself and make sure that you are on that narrow path in the path that leads to life. I'd like to go out to stand
about Jesus and I shared and I, and I prayed for her. I said, I hope that she will share stuff to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as I continue to live for Christ, I know there are so many things that He has took me out of um, when I look back. I just grew up as a regular kid, um, you know, coming to church with my mother. And as I begin to, to learn God's word, hear God's word, and even investigate it for myself and read it for myself. Go and look in the word of God. You know, when Pastor throws out some, some Bible verses, you know, I, I do go and I go look at it and I learn Pastor. And um, for me personally, I, I, I haven't, you know, remember everything of the Bible, but I still do depend on God's word and I trust in it. You know, there are so many challenges ahead. And I know that he will get me through it. And whatever you are praying for, you know, do not stop. Well, I'm the yeah. I am. Um, I, I, I always learn to do, and it's a habit for me. In the morning time, I need long and pray before I go to work. And even in the night time, I pray before I go to sleep. I have made it a habit, you know. And it's not because I'm telling you what it does, you know, what, you know it's, it's, I'm boasting about it. It's something that I have to actually learn on my own that, that you have to, to call upon God when in times of trouble. Yes. No one out there is not, they're not going to understand. We God understands. The things that they go through. And he knows, and I'm putting my trust in him, that he will work out each and every situation. So Amen. do not give up and, and stop praying and saying it's not going to happen. I have been tested and I know God, he will continue to do, to have his way and will and favor in my life or in time for that. Amen. Jesus is calling. Have you come? 
scriptures have said. To enter through the gates of this heavenly place, you must believe that you are only saved by God's grace. He sent his son to die for your sins. Oh. The blood of Christ is how you can be born again. His righteousness protects you from God's wrath. And this is the only way to the heavenly path. So put your trust in the Son and you will surely see that eternal life is not earned, but it is totally free. Amen. Amen.
free from all sins but be addicted to heaven. Amen. Glory to God. I know that we are eternally thankful and grateful but heaven is definitely our home. Amen. Amen. One day there's going to be a lot of that song when we all get heaven what a day of rejoicing it is going to be. That day is fast approaching. God bless you. Amen. Please welcome everyone. To the house of the Lord for the second service of today. Amen. And some of you are doubling up on your blessings. Glory to God. And you were here this morning and then you made it again tonight. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Uh, we have some folks that are on the line right now. Uh, we want to mention a few of them. Amen. And so we have Sister Sarita and Brother Neil uh, with us, also guys here in the family. Uh, Krishna Munesa, Indra, Ram Saran, and others. Uh, uh, we invite you to send in your prayer requests and we'll be praying to you in a little while. This week is a half week ahead of us, amen. But right tonight it's our hour hour and we are looking forward to gathering, getting together united in prayer, amen. Hallelujah. The prayer meeting indeed is uh, the uh, most important meeting of the church week. Uh, also Thursday, it's what fellowship? It's men's fellowship, 7 o'clock right here. It's promised for the very big announcements. And it's promised to be a blast. Amen. So invite a friend, invite somebody and come over on Thursday, 7 o'clock for our men's fellowship. Then on Saturday, of course, it's a um, day of uh, hiking up on the uh, Blanty Shares area, amen. And so we have lots of campers, lots of people are signed up uh, to go. I know that you're really excited. And uh, any further details that you need, uh, please see Suraj or Anna tonight to make your final arrangement. But it's open to all. I understand it's a very soft trail this year, amen. Nothing at all to strenuous. So everyone can go. I believe that if you are a wheelchair, you can take it as well. It is that soft. It's so easy. No, no problem. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to get right into the word of the Lord. Where are we tonight for the message? Well, we are in the book of Proverbs. And that's pretty much chapter 14 and verses 12. Amen. I'm still reminiscing about last Sunday when our ladies took over uh, the service. Bless the name of the Lord. What a time that we had. Amen. It was uh, fantastic. Uh, we enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, our ladies are uh, grouping the church and doing a fantastic job. Amen. Uh, we pray many blessings upon all the various ministries that God has given uh, uh, the Common Science Ministries. So let's read God's book together, Proverbs 14 and verses 12. Now there is a way which seem right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Father, we thank you for the message that we are about to hear on gaining entry through the gates of glory. Hallelujah. One day there will be more seen on gates. <laughs> Amen. We are going to behold with our eyes those pearly gates and we're going to see that celestial city as it was described amen, in the Bible, Holy Jerusalem, uh, coming down from heaven, praise suspended between heaven and the earth itself, that four square uh, city, 1500 miles in every direction, foundations, and, uh, 12 different precious, precious stones, amen, hallelujah. That city, therefore, this gold streets are just like glass, transparent as glass, dear Father. Hallelujah. That's just the beginning because 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, uh, The eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that long. Father, we can only just imagine. Uh, of what, what is going to be in eternity. Praise but dear Father, we know, glory to God, amen, that we will be with Jesus. Hallelujah. We know there will be no more sickness, and no more pain, and no more sorrow. There will be no more death, no more disappointment, no more heartaches in life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So the future for the child of God there is bright. Praise God. Amen. And I pray for those who don't know the Lord will make that decision tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seats. Glory to God. Amen. Getting entered through the grace of glory. Uh, these messages, uh, uh, we have been looking at uh, other ways that people are trying to get into the gates of glory. But be very careful, my friend, of the spirit of deception. Not every way that seems right is right. This is what our text is saying. Sometimes it might seem right, but the end uh, is the way of death and destruction. So when it comes uh, to gaining entrance to the grace of glory, you got to be sure. You can't miss it, my friend. you got to be absolutely sure. Deceptions can be so disguised uh, that it's not easily detected. Satan is so clever in how he masks uh, and camouflage uh, the deceptions that he has. It, it makes it so appealing and so appetizing. And unless you do not have a trained eye and you are not uh, are led by the Spirit of God, easily you can fall into this deception. Amen. There is a story about um, a Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, and he used to tell the time and there uh, was a wave of theft in the Soviet Union. So to curtail this, the authorities put up guards um, around the factories uh, to try to get a handle of what was what was happening, all the thefts that was taking place. Um, so at one time, Timber Woods in uh, Leningrad, the guard knew the workers in the factory very well. And so the first evening came out uh, a man. His name was Peter. Peter Petrovich. Uh, he had a wheelbarrow and uh, on that wheelbarrow there was a bulky sack. So the guard looked at it and thought it was pretty suspicious uh, as he looked uh, at the load that Peter was carrying. And so the guard looked at Peter and said, Peter, all right, what you got in that sack? What you got in that bag? I want you to tell me the truth, Peter, don't lie to me. Tell me what you got in that bag, because you know I'm going to open that bag. And so Peter just answered the, the guard and he said, you know, it's only sawdust and shavings, wood shavings that I got in this sack here. The guard said, come on, Peter, I wasn't born yesterday, all right? Oh, you can you can fool me with that. Listen, you gotta open that sack right now. Tip it over that wee bound. Let's see what you really got in that sack. And so Peter opened that sack and uh, out came, just as he said, nothing but sawdust and shavings. So the guy had no choice. He allowed him to put back uh, uh, the things in the back and go home. But you know, the same thing happened again and again every single day, night rather, of that week. Same thing, Peter would be coming out with a wheelbarrow, with a sack of sawdust and shavings. And it happened all the time. And the guard will be examining the Lord every time. And it's the same, just as Peter uh, Petrovich said. And so he was coming real frustrated of this whole thing. And so finally, his curiosity overcame his frustration. And he said, Petrovich, listen, I know you. I know you for a long, long time. Now listen, something is up here and I can't figure it all at all. Tell me the truth. What are you smuggling out here? And I promise you, I am going to let you go. I would not report you to the authority. Just be honest because I can't figure it out. Every evening you're out here with a sack. Filled with sawdust and shavings in this wheelbarrow here. So tell me, what are you really smuggling out? And so Peter, now with an honest heart, said to the guard, Well, I will tell you, I have been smuggling out wheelbarrows. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, it does not always see what it looks like. Come on, somebody. Deception is a real 
real thing. This is what sin is. It tends uh, to camouflage uh, itself uh, and disguise itself so cleverly because it does not uh, say sin in, in bold and, and big letters. Uh, often sin is packaged so nicely, my friend. Uh, it is so attractive and so appealing uh, and sometimes you can't even trust uh, your own eyes. Uh, Throughout the Bible, there are people whose eyes um, deceive them. Eve, for instance, was one of the first in the Bible whose eyes deceived them. Because the Bible says as the serpent uh, talked to Eve about this forbidden fruit and about this tree, she, the Bible says um, she saw it would make one wise. Yes. Um, you see, she was looking uh, through her physical eyes. Um, I'm not uh, listening to what God had to say about it. Um, and it led to the downfall of humanity. Throughout the Bible, we see it happening again and again. Uh, how men were caught off guard because uh, of their eyes. Uh, how they saw things, the things that they look at. Uh, Samson was another one that was caught because uh, he got a wayward eye, my friend. Uh, he was looking at things that he had no business looking at. Uh, he was looking at women that he had no business looking at. Did I hear amen, somebody? And it brought him down, my friend. It brought him into great trouble. Achan was another man, the servant of, the servant of Elisha. His eyes caused a lot of trouble because he looked at the silver, the garments um, that Naaman had brought him. Achan is another one. His eyes got a lot of trouble because he looked at the Babylonian garment uh, and the wet of gold. The accursed thing that God said, uh, you will take nothing at all that is accursed. Um, yes, uh, his eyes deceived him. Judas also was deceived because of his eyes. He looked at the 30 pieces of silver rather than looking at the Savior, my friend. And, and so you've got to be absolutely careful. That's why Hebrews 12 2 says, looking unto Jesus, Amen. the author and the finisher of your faith, my friend. So be careful where you look up this week. Be careful what you look at this week. Keep your eyes upon Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Don't trust your eyes and don't trust your flesh. Trust as this morning, we heard, trust in the Lord. Amen. A woman walks in the store to return a pair of eyeglasses that she had purchased for her husband a week before. So the clerk said, Madam, what seems to be the problem here? She said, I'll tell you what, I'm returning these eyeglasses I bought for my husband. He said, but, but why? But why? They, are, they look fine to me and nothing wrong with them. They look perfect. Why are you returning them? She said, because he still ain't seen things my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Be careful. Don't let your eyes have the monopoly on you. The just shall labor by faith and not by sight. Amen, somebody? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Many times we often want to see things away. Frank Sinatra sang a song very popular up to today. I see many people, they are seeing their own versions my of it. And his song was, what if doing it my way? His whole life was summed up in that last song before he died. Yes, it was Frank Sinatra's way, doing it his way. Where has it landed him, my friend? Without Christ, in no hope. Without Christ, he's a sinner that is burning in everlasting fire. Without Jesus, that's what you do, what happens when you do it your way. As I says, we all like sheep. We have all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Isn't this what the world is all about today? Don't tell me how to live my life, preacher. Don't tell me what to do with my time. Don't tell me at all where I should go and, 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 and what choices I should make in life. It's my life and I will live it the way that I want to live it. Isn't this what the prodigal son said to his daddy one day? He said, give me my inheritance and I want it right away because I want to go 
go and enjoy myself. Uh, I want to go and live it up in the world. I want to uh, explore. I want to experiment. Um, I've been withheld uh, from all these things all my life. Um, and it's about time that I use my wings and that I fly. Uh, my friend, where did it end it him up? It ended him up in a big pen. It ended him up uh, worse than a pig, my friend. Yes, sir. that's when you want to do it your way rather than God's way, my friend. God's way is always the best way. Could I hear you, amen, somebody? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My friend, always align yourself with the scripture and what the word of God has to say. It will always be well with you. But when you move outside of pyramidism of God's word, you will find yourself in trouble. I can tell you the amount of people that I've spoken to, I've counseled with, and I've encouraged members of the church as well as people on the outside. Do it God's way, my brother and my sister. Make choices and decisions, amen, that will bring blessings upon you and your family, upon your children. Stay in church, amen. Stay in the word of the Lord. Be faithful. It will be well with you. God's a promise in God's word. But many people at a time in their life, they feel that they have been too much hedged in them. Too much of rules and regulations um, in the church and uh, it's depriving me of a life of freedom and joy and pleasure, my friend. But there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There were two elderly and excited women that were sitting together in the front pew of the church um, and they were listening to the preacher and he was a fiery preacher that day. And so the preacher, feeling moved by the Spirit of God to speak um, against sin, boldly, amen. He would apologize in glory to God like I do oftentimes because um, we've got to preach the truth, praise God. It's the only thing going to save your soul, amen, somebody. Glory to God, hallelujah, amen. And so the preacher condemned to begin with him. He condemned the, the sin of Stephen because it is written in the word of the Lord, one of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not steal. Amen. You will covet nothing of somebody else, even your neighbor's wife. I tell you, he condemned that sin of stealing, my friend. And the two ladies that were in front of they cried in the top of their lungs and they were saying, Amen, brother. Preach the word of the Lord. They stood up and they gave a cat offering as well. But with that kind of encouragement, the preacher said, Ain't no stopping now. My friend, I tell you, if you've ever been behind this pulpit, if you want your preacher to keep on fighting up, amen, you got to shout an amen from the congregation. Yeah. You got to stand, amen, glory to God, and clap your hand. You got to shake a tambourine or shake a shack shack or beat a drum, amen, or play some keyboard or do something, glory to God, yeah. and your preacher will be fired up. But my friend, I tell you, you can kill your preacher when you're just watching and staring and he is on his high point and he ain't getting nothing. Oh, you have yeah. to give you a, a response, my friend. You want to know who is he preaching to? Is it a secretary I'm preaching to the line? Or what is going on? There is no response. People face the black. I wonder where their minds are traveling right now and what that. But my friend, I guarantee you, praise God. If you want your preacher to continue to be on the fine line, support your preacher. Glory to God. Amen. While this preacher, amen. Hallelujah. I know that the excessiveness I see in church. Lost is of the devil, and he 
from Darren Lawson. Oh, I tell you, those two ladies up in front uh, again, they said, right on, brother. You got it, brother. You are telling it as it is, preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, those ladies was a big support. The preacher now, I tell you, he ain't stopping all my friend. He's on the fast track. He's getting the support. He is, he is going on. He said, listen, I don't only condemn the sin of stealing. I don't only condemn the sin of lust. But I also condemn the sin of gossip. Well, at that moment, all of a sudden, the two women in front got pretty quiet, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one of them said, you know what? He quit preaching and now he's never it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Right. My friend, we gotta watch out. Amen. Yeah. If it is not one thing, it's another thing. They don't want to track you. They want to deceive you with one thing or all the other. Because as I, I, I know it, my friend, sometimes I tell you your strength uh, might be somebody else's weakness. Amen. And somebody else's weakness might be your strength because we are not on the same level for our certain things um, are concerned. I know we have great victories, amen, in some areas of life, but other areas are really struggling badly. But in those same areas, you are having the victories, you are strong. That's why we got to support each other and encourage each other, my friend. But what will the other? The devil will study you like an exam, my friend. That's what he's doing. He's studying you like an exam. And he is looking at you and tacting, especially he knows where you are most vulnerable, my friend. If you are a person that easily gets offended, oh, I tell you, you want to work on that. While the preacher is preaching, you say, look at that preacher. He throws stones at me. He come out to preach at me because he knows you're going to take offense quickly. So he will hit you there and he will hit you there. Come on, somebody. He knows your weakness. He knows what bait to dangle in front of your face. He's a professional fisherman, my friend. He's been dealing with men for thousands of years. And he knows exactly what bait to dangle in front of you because he knows where you are most vulnerable. What is your weakest point? You got to end up, you know, bring up situations to get you right there until you start cussing, my friend, like a sailor. That's what he's going to do. Hello, somebody. He knows that weakness, whatever it is. He is going to set that trap. He's going to bait it to bring you down. So you got to be minded of that, praise God. We can easily be misled and deceived. That's why the Bible says that I mentioned this verse here in Psalm 146, verse 3. Don't put your trust in your flesh. Amen. Don't put it in man, but put your trust in the living God. Amen. You can easily be deceived about yourself as well. There are some people that trust in themselves so much. They boast in themselves. Don't you know people come and say, preacher, you got to worry about me. I will never, never fall like that brother, like that sister. I will never do something like that. I will always serve the Lord. Oh, I tell you. But my friend, they underestimated the weakness of the flesh. They underestimated themselves. And so given the opportunity, given the environment, given brothers and sisters the time and the place, you will find out how easily it is for you to become enticed and in, in trapped by the enemy. You've got to always be on your knees, glory to God, hallelujah. You always got to be in prayer, amen, and says, oh Lord, keep me because I can't keep myself alone. I am trusting in you and not in this flesh, Lord, because this thing is all easily going to betray me, my friend. Oh, I tell you, you know what it is, young people. Oh, I tell you, when the music is just right, come on, somebody. My goodness, and the ambience is just right. Come on, the environment is just right. And you just got the, you got the right uh, darkness in the room there. Come on, somebody. Oh, I tell you, it's easy to fall prey to the enemy, my friend. Uh, glory to God. That's why you got to watch yourself day and night. Amen. I tell you, this sin is so uh, tricky and, and clever. There is a story about a 
a zookeeper and his name was Gary. In fact, his full name was Gary Richmond. And uh, this is what he had to say one time. Now, I know that we are too, too familiar uh, with raccoons here on the island, um, but we have something like a, a, a manicou, you would say. You know manicou can be vicious and they could bite like dogs. In fact, they could even bite, bite worse than dogs. For those of you who are hunters of manicou, their teeth are absolutely sharp like razor, my friend. Raccoons are worse than manicous. They got a bad camp. Anybody got a bad camp here tonight? Come on. You got a bad camp. You don't bite off anybody here that cross your pathway. Raccoon, they need a lot of counseling, my friend. Yeah. They, they need a psychiatrist to deal with some of their issues and, uh, and so on. They, 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 yes, and especially when they're going through their, their glandular change. Amen. You know what it is, woman, when you go through your change as well, too. Uh, when you reach menopause, it's a, it's a different ball game altogether. Your temperament change. Uh, you're feeling all, uh, you know, burning up and you don't want nobody to touch you and this and that. And, well, I don't want to get into much of that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's something to keep in mind. It might be a little thing for you as well, sir whose wives are hitting that age, 45, 55, especially if that's the time that they go through their change, my friend. And you've got to be very minded of that situation, glory to God. But some of them go through that, they don't have to reach that 45 to 55. They go through that almost every week. <laughs> <laughs>
we have a different thing going. He really loves me. He really cares about me. He will never, never hurt me in his entire life. It will be different for me. And you know what the name of that raccoon was? She had to name him Bandit. <laughs> Mary said, Bandit. Bandit will never hurt me. He could not do it at all. But my friends, it was just three months after that she underwent plastic surgery for facial lacerations, uh, sustained when her adult raccoon attacked her for no apparent reason. My friend, uh, Bandit had to be released uh, back into the wild. You can't trust him, my friend. Uh, at first it might seem friendly. Come on, somebody. It might seem harmless. It might seem uh, innocent. No consequences. Uh, but my friend, listen, a snake is always a snake. A scorpion is always a scorpion. My dad used to tell me about a story, I still remember that. He said one day, well, there was um, this uh, turtle that was going to cross this river. And so just as a lot for him to cross, um, up came a scorpion. And a scorpion uh, wanted to get across on the other side, but he can't swim. He knew he going to make it. So he came to the turtle and said, listen, could I please, could I please get a ride on your shell to get across the river? The turtle said, what? A ride you want? Are you mad or crazy? You are a scorpion and you are going to sting me? Oh, the scorpion said, man, no, 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 no. I promise you, you are doing me a favor. I will do no such thing. And he crossed, uh, I tell you, his claws. <laughs> he saw, he said, I know not the turtle said, listen, no, sir, I'm telling you, I know you fellas, uh, you're going to sting me. The scorpion said, listen, on my life, um, I will never, never do something that you are crossing over the other side. How can I do that? Well, after much, uh, I tell you, persuasion, the turtle said, all right, I will give you a ride. And so here was the scorpion riding on the back of the turtle across the river. And my friend, three quarter away across, uh, that scorpion stung that old turtle, my friend, uh, oh so badly. And as he was in pain, agonizing pain, he said, uh, scorpion, what did you do? You promised me that you would never sting me. You promised me you swore you would never sting me. And hear what the scorpion said. I can't help myself. That is what I said. What I must do. I am a scorpion. I can't help myself. My friend never gives in a ride. <laughs> Come on, Zabal. Never gives in a ride. No matter what you beg him for a ride. Don't put him in your car. Don't put him in your truck. Don't put him in your boat. Don't take him up in your bicycle, my friend. Come on, don't put him on your maxi at all. And those don't bring him in your house. <laughs> Amen, Zabawi. No matter how that sin is, how nice and look, my friend. Because given the time, you will see, it will strike, my friend. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But the gift of God is eternal life. Glory to God. Amen. It will adorn itself. It will adorn all disguises. But don't play with it. There was a guy many years ago, a friend of mine, and he always said this. He says, if you play with the pups, you're going to get bitten by the fleas. Come on, somebody. If you play with the pups, you're going to get bitten by the fleas. That is words of wisdom. Praise God. Amen. Don't play around and don't dally with the devil, neither dally with sin. Sin, brothers and sisters, will deceive. Yes, deception and misdirection from the devil is absolutely deadly. He has seen doing these things for thousands of years. We see from the time in the Garden of Eden. When he got Eve to believe that God was holding out on her and Adam to the Exodus, um, where he got the Israelites um, uh, to hate 
the Moses, the man of God who, who risked his life, uh, who led them out uh, of the land uh, of Egypt. Uh, in turn, he got them to turn against Moses, my friend, uh, the humble servant of the Lord, uh, and to rebel against the servant. Uh, and so there were three men in the congregation of the people of the Lord, Korah, Nathan, and Abiram. The Bible said one day they stood up uh, and they said to Moses, Moses, you think too much of yourselves. You are lording yourself over God's people. In fact, uh, you think that only you alone that God speaks uh, through in this congregation. But we will have you to know you are not the only man that God speaks through. God speaks to us uh, as well too. We are just uh, holy as you. We have the same authority as you. So why are you lording yourself over God's people? Moses was such a meek and humble soul. The Bible says there was not a person like Moses for us. Meekness was concerned. And in all the earth, many times when God wanted to wipe out Israel because of their rebellion in the wilderness, Moses was the great intercessor. He would plead to the Lord and say, Oh God, forgive their transgression. Oh Lord, please forgive their sin. What would the people say that you brought them out from Egypt and you couldn't bring them in into the land and so you have laid them to waste in the wilderness? And the Bible says God will turn from his face anger. Yes, such was the man Moses. And now, brother and sister, because I guess of envy and jealousy, because they wanted to promote themselves over the people of the Lord, they attacked Moses and they tried to discredit him. They tried to discredit Moses' calling and Moses' ministry, my friend, to usurp authority for God's people. They didn't have a heart for God's people. They only thought of themselves, my friend, and God. Oh, I tell you, you read the Bible, Numbers chapter 16, where we see for the first time that men were being turned into hell alive. Because the Bible says that, that Moses uh, said, listen, I have not appointed myself. It's the Lord that appointed me. But we are going to settle this matter once uh, and for all. You come up with your senses and I will come up with mine. And it will be determining who the Lord hath chosen. And as you all know, my friend, on that day when everything was set and they came out, uh, they were Korah, David, and Hiram together with their wives uh, and their children and all those that are following him uh, in rebellion. And Moses and Aaron was on the other side. The Bible tells us uh, that God, uh, Amen, spoke to Moses through Moses, Amen. And, and Moses said, Listen, guys, um, today it will be settled. Um, yes, um, who the Lord has called. Uh, and if the Lord did not do a new thing, Moses said, uh, and the earth uh, would open up, uh, and the earth would uh, swallow you uh, and your family, then you would know you have rebelled. Then you will know you have sinned against the Lord. And the Bible says the earth uh, started to shake. A great earthquake took place. Uh, and there was a split in the earth immediately between Moses and, and Aaron. And between uh, Nathan, Abiram and, uh, and Korah and, and those in rebellion. And as the earth opened up, uh, the Bible says they were swallowed in alive. Uh, and they went down to hell, my friend. Uh, and there they are today. Because why? It is because they allow themselves to be deceived by the enemy. You've got to be careful about that. Praise God. Amen. Even to the time of David. When David focused rather than on the work of the Lord. And what God has called him to do. Just for a lapse in ministry, first time you happen. You agree that, my friend, when you ought to be out in the war together with Joab and the men of war, David chose to stay home and just to relax. He had fought many battles. He said to himself, I deserve some relaxation. And nothing is absolutely wrong with that, my friend. But the problem was the idle hands become the devil's workshop, my friend. He was not engaged anymore in the things of the Lord. He became lax and disical, as it were. Come for devil now. And the devil says, I'm going to give you something to do. I'm going to play with your mind. And I'm going to speak the devil knew, amen, David. He knew that one of the weaknesses, he loved many women. And his son, the son Solomon, they boost the kid. Amen. David had a few of them, but his son Solomon had a hundred. 
hundreds of them at the same time, my friend. And so why the Bible says walking on the roof of his house, because the roof was flat in those days with just a railing around. He could see the houses around Jerusalem. And there was a certain house of one of his faithful servants, Uriah. And his wife was bathing, the Bible tells us. And David cast his eyes upon this woman, a beautiful woman, but a married woman. Amen. Off limits to David. But David had no fear and lust. He sent for her, and she had to come. That was the king's order. And David committed sin with Bathsheba, and she gave him pregnant, my friend. Oh, I'll tell you, the story goes on. And you will see, because of this, the trouble that David brought upon himself and his household, my friend, because um, he was not focused upon the Lord. He was focused on something else. He was deceived by the enemy, glory to God. But this continues, my friend, to Judas, the time that he was paid off by Caiaphas and the high priest for betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. There yes, so deception and misdirections are two main weapons that the enemy uses. The Bible tells in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He comes up as what he isn't, my friend. Yes, um, and so you have to be warned uh, and careful about the enemy. There's a story about just offshore, North Carolina, on an island. It is called Cape Hatteras Island. And there is a village that is known as Nax, N-A-G apostrophe S, Nax. Head. And what is interesting about this, my friend, it was back in the 1800s that uh, the wreckers live. These people are those that uh, they uh, pirate uh, ships. Uh, they call them the wreckers. And so the made are living, gathering up the remains, yes, the loot, uh, parts of the cargo ships and so on that had run aground in the night. But these ships didn't run aground accidentally, my friend, no. They were lured into the sandbanks and into the rocks by these wreckers. These were deceitful men. What they did, they had fastened a lighted lantern into the head of an old nag. That's a horse. Thus the names nags head. And so will then lead that old nag, that old horse, up and down, back up and forth on the edge of the Diamond Shoals Beach. Now ships out at sea would mistake this bubbling lantern for the still light of a ship that they had supposed that had made it safely through the passage of the rocks and, and all of that. And so they were in turn now seeing that light bubbling up and down. They will make their way towards that light, thinking about um, it is a safe way, it is a safe passage, my friend, uh, only to run aground on the rocks um, with nowhere to go. The crew on the ship um, was no contest, no challenge, you were sitting ducks um, for these deceivers, these wreckers, my friend. Um, and they were diligent, the ship and its cargo. In fact, wrecking became a thriving business in Nag's head. And even though it was built upon treachery, even now guests to Nag's head can see the old home built and furnished them with the materials taken for more than 2,300 ships that were deceived and ran aground because of this deception. Yes, ultimately they were destroyed. And they lost their lives because of what? Because of deception. Be careful of the lights out there in the world, my friend. Be careful of the lying lights that I tell you parades this world today. They look beautiful, they look gorgeous, fascinating, spectacular, my friend. But be careful, because in it uh, there could be death and destruction. Follow the true light uh, that will lead you safely through the gates of glory. 
Jesus Christ. In John 9, 5, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, praise God. In John 8, 12, the light, Jesus said that I am, yes, that true light, amen. Hallelujah. That has come into this world, praise God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, my friend. Continue to look to the true light, Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Nobody can get to the Father but by Him. Would you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an awesome message coming our way again in the world, filled and littered with deceptions. And as we are all too familiar with what Paul had to say, says in the last days, there will be perilous times that will come upon the earth. There will be many deceivers, many anti-Christ who have gone out into the world. Many would be led astray and be shipwrecked their Lord. Many would lose their way. Even some in the church will end up losing their way because they have been allowed themselves to be deceived by the devil, by false doctrines as well too. And the fellow men who only want to have the preeminence um, in the church, uh, who only want to exalt themselves, um, rather to be true servants of the people, to have a heart for the people, and to be a true servant uh, of Jesus Christ, praise God. I pray for all people here that you give them much wisdom, that none will be deceived by the devil. They will not none be fallen prey to Satan to the lust uh, of, 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 the, uh, of the, the, this world, the, the pride of life, their Lord, none, their Lord Jesus would be led astray their battle. But their Lord will keep our eyes always focused upon the one, the only one, the one who saved us, uh, the one who died for us in the cross of Calvary, and the one who's coming back again, their father. Are you men? Uh, we will make it through the grapes of glory when that time comes uh, in Jesus' name. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, say this prayer with me right now, Heavenly Father. I repent of my sin and ask forgiveness. Tonight I receive Jesus as my Savior. And I will keep my eyes upon Him until I make it through the gates of glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You have some prayer requests? Thank you. Well, we got just about well, two here tonight. Amen. And so we're going to pray for someone that needs a job, said Nika Baba. You know the needs of your people, and I pray, dear Lord, that that need will be met for our sister in the name of Jesus. We also lift up the second request, dear Lord, uh, for Bastille, uh grandmother, and she ain't doing well. And dear Father, we pray for her right now, dear Lord, that uh, you will touch her body, dear Father. And she might be up in that age, dear Lord, but I pray, dear Lord, that you would rejuvenate strength, dear Father, until, dear Lord, and hallelujah, until the Lord comes and is ready, dear Lord, for her. Most importantly, I pray, Lord, for salvation. If you don't know Christ, will come to know him, dear Father. I pray also, dear Lord, for praying, continue to heal that for our gaze. I pray, dear Lord, for Sally, continue to heal her as well, for my mother, Continue to heal her, dear Lord, for Shirley and her husband, continue to be with them and give them the strength and the grace that they need, dear Lord. And all others, dear Father, dear, that might not be well tonight, I pray God for your healing upon them, dear Father. Continue to bless our children as they are, uh, Lord, in the time of the exams, dear Lord, that all be successful, Lord. Continue to bless your people, dear Father, for this great nation of ours. That this nation will come to know Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We invite this stand as we take up an offering tonight. Amen. And then we will be uh, going forward and see you all on Wednesday for prayer meeting and also our Bible study. Bless the Lord. Offering bearers, would you have come? Bye. 